Good morning, everybody. Wednesday morning, and it's been a week since the little rascal, our 1988 Coachman camper van, the Dearborn edition, built on an Econoline 250 van, Ford product, has been on the Rancho. And, well, other things have kind of taken priority, but uh, yesterday I did manage to take it for a what's called a smog pre-test and although it came damn close to passing, it failed on the what they call the low speed or 15 mile an hour noxious emissions. Now, everything else passed. We're talking about six different categories, passing five here. And uh, it's good to do a pretest to kind of give you an idea where you stand because this rig sat for several years. I think on the order of maybe even uh, five years because of various electrical problems and other things. So, had it charging overnight here. I'm not going to do the tour. I'm just going to tear in and get started uh, today. Open up the uh, door here. See what we got. I was hoping my uh, paperwork would be around. Yeah, I have the doghouse out because you need to have the doghouse out when you have your uh, testing uh, testing done. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah. And here we go. Uh, Walter Miles did the uh, testing yesterday. And uh, the results were... You're measuring the hydrocarbons. The maximum you're allowed to have is 80. I guess you can't see that too good. Let's come out of here. Get this situated properly. I think the maximum you're allowed to have is 81 parts per uh, parts per thousand. The average is 47. At 15 miles an hour, we came in at 33, way below average, and also at the 25 mile an hour, 20, 27 which is really a comfortable range the average being 37 to max is 68 our carbon monoxide 0 0.06 is the average we came in uh, measured 09 you're up to have 0.46 so it's five times the uh, one fifth at a level and then uh, average is 0 0.08 you measured 0 0.17 you can have up to 59 now in terms of the 15 mile an hour test for the noxious we had uh, 731 parts per uh, thousand. You're allowed 694, so we didn't miss by much. Less than, well, maybe about, uh, maybe about less than 10% here. But it's pretty high compared to the average. And we're, we're gold at lower. I mean, at higher speed, they measured 30, 30, 391. The average is 283, the maximum is 596, so we're 200 air. So we have to figure out what's going on at uh, low speed so we can go ahead and uh, pass, this, uh, pass this emissions testing. So there we go. So to do that, we're going to start tearing into some of this electrical and this uh, engine work. And uh, you can see here got things like the uh got things are in pretty good shape in here you but you got uh breather valves like this egr valve here this thing could be uh could be stuck this uh, uh exhaust gas recirculation valve there's a there's a lot of valves you see here that after sitting for years uh could have uh could have gone bad and these are the things that are going to be checked out i'm not going to go through the tedious stuff on a video of doing it but there's a lot of vacuum lines around here and at certain speeds this engine pulls a vacuum and it helps regulate the flow of uh of fuel and air into the engine here now what could be uh now if those vacuum hoses are pinched or degraded then of course you're not holding a true vacuum and you could have some you will have some problems maintaining the fuel air mixture across a range of uh, rpms bottom line is at certain speeds you may fail you may pass because it's going you know the air mixed air fuel mixture 
is in the proper ratios, but then at lower speeds, you may not be pulling enough vacuum to, to have that. So that's what's going on here. There's a couple other issues. Uh, now, some of you are gonna say, geez, Rosie, you, you picked up the rig that sat for years. You drove it 280 miles and you didn't change the oil. You know, that would have been a starter. Well, the theory is get it gone good, get it running on the road, get all that old oil circulating. Now back on the ranch, we can drain that out and push fresh, put fresh oil in, because that's one of the simple things. Burning that old oil could have caused uh, a higher noxious uh, uh, output here of noxious uh, emissions. So we're going to be changing the oil today. Also, another cause of higher noxious emissions can also be uh, an engine temperature that's a little too high. You're burning, you're burning too much, uh, too much of the mixture in there. It's getting too hot, and as a result, you're over combusting that uh, mixture and popping it into the air. So we want to also try to flush the uh, cooling system here, clean that out, put some fresh, uh, put some fresh in. Uh, flush things real good and uh, hopefully between those two things and some addressing the uh, vacuum lines um, we're going to be able to drop those noxious uh, out that noxious output down a lot and uh, I'm expecting that uh, when it comes time for the actual test next uh, Tuesday that we'll be able to uh, pass that with that a lot of issues so yeah changing oil is important uh, making sure your air cleaner is good, but basically we're the engines kind of what the noxious emissions are telling you is the engines running a little on the hot side. This is why some people in the old days they would retard the timing or the ignition for when the uh, air fuel mixture was firing in the cylinder. They would retard that. So it would uh, fire a little bit later, therefore they would have less of a hot kind of output. It would run cooler, but now they're smart. They would also muck around with the idle, adjusting the idle speed and various fuel air mixtures. But this is why the manufacturers, the government forced them to seal these systems and uh, prevent people from changing idle speeds. Everything is controlled by computer and, and valves that open and close. They also check to make sure the timing is correct. They'll get under there with the strobe light. They'll look at the uh, flywheel and they'll make sure that the uh, timing hasn't been adjusted so you can fiddle with uh, so you can fiddle to try to pass the uh, pass the test. So very interesting things. Uh, I'm imagining we're not going to have a problem going forward. What's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that the catalytic converter may be bad and that's a relatively expensive uh, part but the readings at other levels across the spectrum and you want to make sure you get those readings you don't want something that just simply says you fail because it gives you no guidance in working on the working on the rig so i'm happy that i uh, requested that output and got that um, so it gives me a basis for uh, for working here so I need to go to the auto parts store. I need to get some oil. I need to get some flush and some cleaner for the radiators and the uh, cooling system. And probably a few other, uh, look at a few other items too. I'm gonna save the electrical system work uh, for the uh, weekend because I'm not gonna have as much time. I got up a little later today. I'm doing an afternoon chooch. I'm just keeping the battery hot here. Uh, the basic problem with this rig is, well, everywhere you look, there's uh, loose connections that, uh, that don't make a lot of sense to me. And I need to, uh, they just kind of, right? I mean, shit just kind of falls off, right? It's not, it's not what you want to see. But again, using the uh, schematic and everything, I don't think we're going to have a huge, uh, I'm going to have a huge problem getting it, this fixed. Now, what are the symptoms now? You run the rig and it runs down the battery. Luckily, when I went to Reno, I bought a, uh, I bought a new battery. And just on that battery with no alternator, no, no ability to recharge that battery, that uh, battery lasted 280 miles before it crapped out. So that just goes to show you, you can go a long time with an inadequate charging system and not even know, know it. But I already knew the charging system had uh, problems. This is one of the reasons that the seller gave me a healthy rebate of $1,000 on the uh, rig 
and it really helped uh, lower my purchase price because I can do a lot of work uh, myself but it wasn't charging and um, it could be the alternator uh, you know I haven't even bothered to check that I'm going to save that for the weekend I need to tear into all things electrical here I've also got the uh, check the voltage regulator I want to check the whole system uh, so between those two we're looking at maybe uh, 60 80 bucks for a rebuilt alternator and maybe $15 for a voltage regular again it's not it's not going to be a killer to take care of that uh, that problem so our top priority now is getting this baby ready getting this engine in tip-top shape so that when we go to get our actual emissions test next week we're going to uh, we're going to pass through there whiz through there with uh, flying colors so I'll see you guys in a little bit. We're gonna get some pans and get some stuff and start to uh, start to get the show on the road, draining some uh, fluids here. So, okay, we'll see you soon. I will mention uh, one other thing too here in terms of the coach. Geez, there's another lock. I wonder if I have the damn key too, right? In terms of the uh, coaches, you're required to be able to access the uh, gas tanks during the emission test and that was a big problem for me yesterday because well the dope that sold us the uh, coach the intermediary didn't know where the keys were luckily I found at least the key to the front uh, gas tank or the rear gas tank under the seat so I was able to get that open and then I ended up having to pry and basically destroy the lock on this mechanism to get this one off so this is another requirement in california and my two gas caps failed so i have to go ahead and order two uh, two new ones the guy was nice enough to uh, continue the test because they have what's called a visual expect inspection too when it comes to uh, smogging and they just stop immediately if they see a problem there's no sense going on until that visual problem it could be people puncture their exhaust lines to try to get more oxygen in less output they try a lot of different things so they visually check everything air cleaners all the systems and uh, they put a vacuum test on these uh, gas tanks and if you don't have a decent cap on it you're gonna you're gonna fail so all right let's get on the road now I hope you guys don't mind heat because everywhere I go I've got a window that doesn't really come down here yet and believe me riding with the doghouse out is uh, well it's a bird of a different feather when it's 95 degrees in the afternoon but this is why we're kind of heading out a little bit a uh, little bit early today. on the microphone it's really nice to have a rig that thing sounds sweet love that engine that 351 that 5.8 so nice to have a rig that I can just split head out without having to worry about moving a lot of damn vehicles. That's a beautiful thing. Shift real good, real smooth, plenty of power. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, the engine is uh nice and hot this is something i should have done before but didn't really have a chance to when you're on the road picking up a rig you do what you can do this oil is old and it is plenty nasty and this is uh one good way to fail your emissions is to be using oil that's Totally black. Uh, open that up a little more. Uh, 
I lent out my big wrenches. Bad looking, really bad looking. And there she goes, boys. That is some really bad looking oil there. Let's get all that out of there. You can imagine lining the cylinder walls with that when you're having combustion. That'll add up to uh, some noxious fumes, right? All right, we're gonna let that drain and then we gotta tackle the oil filter. Which be, oh, where are you hiding? Which be right there, so, okay. All right, next thing we wanna do, make sure you got a good banded or end cap oil filter remover. We wanna go ahead and loosen that. Just enough that we can uh, get in there by hand and uh, untwist that. Okay, you want to be careful not to spill a lot of the uh, goo if you can, okay? You want to make sure to preserve that base where it mounts to the metal base on the side of the uh, engine block there. You want to make very sure to keep that clean so okay there's our filter we'll go ahead and drop that now okay and then we'll uh, inspect that base mounting you can see it up there clean that off really good we'll break out our new uh, our new oil filter and we'll make sure to put some filter some oil inside to avoid a uh, dry start of the engine all right, we got the uh, new filter up in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put our uh, tightener on there. It's a little awkward working in here, but we'll get it on. Just let me get the wrench on for a second. <laughs> Do not want to over tighten these or you'll damage the filter. Right now it's still relatively loose. This is just helping me turn it a little bit. And these filter wrenches are very good very good things to have okay one more little snug down and that will be it okay now it remains to get our uh, <clears throat> our bolt out of there let's clean up the uh, mounting surface for the uh, oil pan and let's pop our uh, let's pop our uh, plug in and get our new oil in Make sure when you uh, put your plug back in that you don't cross the threads. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that with the uh, backyard mechanics. Put it in, if it resists tightening, they just go at it, boy, and just till they cut new threads that are crossed to the original ones. So also make sure that your uh, seating area is very very clean this is something we want tight but again don't over tighten there we go and that should be perfect All right, make sure to uh, cap this really good okay and then we'll haul that out and our oil filter will dispose of this uh, properly I love to find a uh, manufacturing date on that if I looked hard enough, a date code. Boy, that was some kind of dirty oil, guys. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, 
Start filling her up here. Here's our oil fill valve. I believe it takes uh, five quarts. So I really like to use Penn's oil high mileage. Although this is not a really high mileage vehicle at 80,000. Can't hurt. Port. That should be, uh, this might hold a little more. I'm not sure. I'm using 5W30, which is an excellent weight. All right, I'm going to finish topping her up and check with the stick periodically. You don't want to overfill it, or you'll have to get a uh, pump and pump that out. So, all right. Rolling along today, day one of uh, cleanup and restoration. Always good to use a funnel. And if you, one old mechanics trip, if uh, trick, if you don't want to be uh, glub glub glubbing when you get it out, just turn it sideways. And see how different it uh, pours. Look at the difference between pouring it this way and pouring this way. It is just silky smooth, huh? All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop there and let things uh, even out a little bit and see where we are on the stick. See? Show you guys the things. All right, very important when you start her up, you want to check for, uh, make sure your oil pressures rising where it should be we're right centered up there which is good exactly where we uh, exactly where we want it and we look down below make sure we don't have any leaks or anything we should oh, sorry about that it's crazy to selfie stick is the bad hat since I've popped this uh, I popped this door open to get to this cap I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch tanks now to let it start pulling off this now you have to understand that fuel in California is different than other places we have a summer blend and we have a winter blend this is why California gas prices also often go haywire because when there's a refinery outage or something, you just can't truck or pipeline in fuel from other places in the country. There's a special formulation. Now, when I filled up in uh, Nevada, of course, I was using Nevada gasoline in the front tank and then I had to figure out, oh, I have to cut over to the back tank. Uh, I was using his original fuel. Then we had uh, filled up, but I didn't know it. Then I flipped the, uh, I filled up the back tank, but we were running off the front. So when I ran out of fuel, Jen and I are looking at, oh, maybe we've got to, uh, she noticed that switch, we got to throw the fuel switch. Well, what we were doing at that point was burning the new Nevada gasoline that we had put in. Now that formulation is different than California formulation. It's not designed to run as clean. And this could be another reason I was a little high on emissions. So this morning I took the opportunity to fill up the front tank and I'm going to throw the switch now and we're going to keep running on the front tank here. It may stop at a minute, I'm not sure. Or it may just seamlessly run off that. This will also increase my chances of getting her through the smog testing because I'll be burning a cleaner California fuel here. So every little bit helps and I'm also going to take uh, the opportunity to replace these uh, gas caps they're locking ones so we have to be very careful to hold the keys for these that's the uh, new stall that we have here man it's just keys 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 this rig must have 15 keys on it so far Go ahead and change out this front front one. See how this 
is going to work. That old one is lost. Its uh, seals degraded, so they couldn't test it. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Okay, it's going to take two hands for this guy. Well, Sorry. it looks like the guy sold me the wrong caps. So back we go. All right, finally got the right kind of uh, replacement cap. Seems like this in this area, everything takes two trips to get done. Everybody's earning while you're learning on the job. So get rid of that old one, and we got a nice new one. Okay, and there we go. Nice and tight. Okay, put our key in a safe location. I'm going to disable that lock anyway eventually. But for now, we'll stick it there. We just carefully uh, tighten up some of these valve cover gaskets too. Okay. Got when, uh, that one was having a little bit of drippage on the other side over there, so it's good to tighten them. Caution is don't over tighten them or you'll uh, you'll strip them you'll break them off and uh, you'll really have a leak in your uh, valve cover bit i tightened them on this side really carefully not too much i had a tiny bit of smoking and the uh, leaking seems to have uh, stopped not much of a leak just it was a little wet there and i want to close that off i don't want any problems with leaking oil I don't want to have any problems on a visual failure when I go in for the uh, smog test. If they see something smoking, it's game over. Probably doesn't seem to you guys like a lot got done today, but well, it's like a, um, to a lot of you guys, it's like a girl you got your eye on. You want to kind of go slow. You want to size it up. You want to make sure you know all the angles before you go charging in. And Part of this was uh, today the back and forth flow to the auto parts store, wrong gas caps, uh, wanted to change up, uh, well, a couple different things that uh, I had been uh, sold, but the oil's changed, she's running like a top. I'm going to wait for the engine to cool down today, pull the radiator cap, and we're going to use the uh, Prestone flush and cleaner, and what this is going to do is over a period of three days as i run the engine well over the weekend and everything it's going to help to uh loosen a lot of that crap in the uh, cooling system the radiator we're going to flush it out i have new upper and lower radiator hose we're going to fill it we're going we're not going to use a lot of uh antifreeze when we put it in before we go to uh, have it tested we want to use something that's uh, been around for a while that works great it's called the hyperlube super coolant and what this does is give you a lower operating temperature for your engine and used with just a maybe one quarter the usual amount of, uh, of uh, antifreeze anti-coolant here the uh, uh, prestone it will uh, pull the engine temperature down significantly and that should help when we do the uh, when we do the testing uh, too so the super coolant is a uh, great thing and in some cases you can get a 20 degree reduction which which will be meaningful so flushing out and cleaning up the uh, cooling system will be key I'm also monitoring the uh, drawdown here on the uh, on the battery for the system just so I have a baseline to understand what my uh, where my leakage is and the rate of leak on the uh, vampire leakage that I have in terms of the electrical system uh, I need to make sure I can get this charging the battery I had it on the uh, battery charger today so we got that hurdle to get over in addition we have the high idle here we need to get into here behind the air cleaner we need to get into the uh, automatic idle adjuster and see what's going on with that because right now our idle speed is way too high we got our hands full guys but uh, we got about a week to get things done and uh, we'll do it 
we'll get her done. Thanks for being along today.